This is our new Brompton Barber bike. It hasn't been out for a ride yet and I really can't wait to ride it. But we, like you, don't like scratches on our new shiny bicycles. So we thought we'd protect it. We found these bike shields specifically made for the Brompton. They come in glossy and matte finish. This bike is glossy, so we are going to use glossy. Some people use Gorilla or helicopter tape, like this. If you've used it, let us know how you get on. Because we think one of the advantages of these bike shields is that if you remove them, they are sp supposed to leave no residue. The bike protector claims that it's invisible protection. It's really easy to apply. It is extremely durable. It's self-healing. It's invisible clear and it does not yellow. Apparently it's easy to remove and it has complete instructions inside. To be honest, this video has taken us six months to a year to get round to making because we kind of thought these would be difficult to apply and so then look rubbish. But you know what? They're easy to apply and I'm really impressed with the look. They actually look quite pretty. I quite like the tiger stripes on the edge of the mainframe. I didn't really want to try out the Brompton until I tried it on my mountain bike and found it protected it really well. I thought that if it could protect that, then it can protect my Brompton. This is specific for the Brompton and unusually for bike products, it's made in Sweden. So let's face it, Swedish products are pretty good normally. So let's take a look inside and pop it on the bike. What do we have? We have one, two, three sheets of protectors, one sticker, and some instructions on where what goes. So now we need to find the stickers and put them in the right place. We make it that the pack includes 30 stickers, 14 of which tell you where to put them. The rest of them you can put where you want. Before starting, it is really important that you wash your hands thoroughly using soap to stop you getting any dirt or grime or fingerprints on the frame or the protectors. Before you apply it, you need to make sure it's clean. I'm using a microfiber cloth because that's normally brilliant for buffing things up. So I'm looking at the instruction manual, trying to find a simple one to start with. And I'm thinking that's not the top tube, nor the forks or the stay. So I'm going to go for the seat tube. I'm going to find my sticker. There you go. Snap. It's this one here. It's recommended that you apply the middle of the sticker first and then smooth it out from the middle outwards to make sure there's no air bubbles. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to unpeel the sticker and then offer it up to where I think it goes. And with my other hand, I'm going to get the cables out of the way. If you're wondering why I'm not saying anything, I have never fitted these before and it's taking all of my concentration to put them on correctly and I'm really trying hard not to get any air bubbles. Sorry. And now I get to give my bicycle a good massage to make sure it's air bubble free. And I think that it will now stop the cables from rubbing on the frame. In case you're wondering about these air bubbles, apparently they're supposed to disappear in seven days. Well, let's see. Because that was so easy, and we know that the bubbles are going to disappear after seven days, we thought we'd go for the biggest and possibly the most difficult, the top tube this one. As you can see the straight edge goes at the front of the bicycle and the curvy edge is going to go at the rear of the bicycle by the seat clamp so that this bit is going to go around the middle and then those two edges that are sticking out are going to fold around the bicycle. So let's go for it. So I'm going to peely peely the backing of this protector and then get the bicycle to be my friend We'll press down in the middle of the sticker and try and keep it as straight as possible. Peeling the backing paper off. 
pulling the cables out of the way, trying not to get any air bubbles, or push as many air bubbles out as I can. Work from the inside to the outside. Sticking over my decal, which I think will be a really good test if we remove it to make sure that the decal comes out intact. Giving the bicycle a well-deserved massage before he goes out for his first ride. It has cutouts to help cope with the curve of the Brompton. And you can see there's a little indent here so that it goes round the frame. Go away, Mr. Air Bubble. I'm looking forward to you going in seven days. I'm actually not too unhappy with that. Most of the air bubbles actually work out really well if you just press on them. In case you didn't know, this is the top tube. It runs across the top of the bicycle and it now has a protective cover on it, which I actually think looks quite good if I do so, so myself. We're going to repeat this process with as many of these stickers as we have time for so that our bike is prophylactically protected from any damages whilst we're riding it. But because we know you don't like watching paint dry, we're not gonna make you watch all of it. We did a quick consumer poll to see if the average man on the street knew where each of these stickers should go on the bicycle. And it came out 100% zero, that no one had any idea where any of them would go really. So we thought we'd point out where the stickers should go. That's the 14 of them that tell you where they go. For this, I'm going to unfold the bicycle. Just as a quick recap, the left-hand side is as you're sitting on the bicycle. The right-hand side is the drive side, so where the chain is. So I'm now gonna point out where all of the specified ones should go. Top tube to seat brace left side is here. I've just put fingerprints on it. I'll clean them off later. After a little snip here, I'm really happy it's now installed properly. Left fork is here. They're relatively obvious which way up they go because the cutout goes at the cutout with the fork. Right fork is the right fork leg. Right chainstay is here. Hopefully you can see that underneath the chain. Left chainstay to the seat stay brace is here with the cutouts for the pump. Right chainstay to the seat stay brace is here. Left chainstay, the left chainstay. Left seat stay is here. And the right seat stay is here. The seat tube is here. The front of the top tube is here. The head tube we've had lots of discussions about. In our world, this is the head tube between the headset. This sticker is too big for here. The top tube is along here. The top tube to seat tube brace right side is here. Then the unspecified little ones can go wherever you think it's going to wear. For me, the biggest weakness is where the cables rub on the stem. So I would be putting one of them nicely under there. It's now been seven days since we've put all of the protective stickers in every place we could with the exception of the head tube. And well, I don't see any bubbles. So I've been really quite impressed. The only bubble I have to admit is just one little one there. Did you like this video? Have we missed anything? Have you tried protecting your bicycle and how have you done it? We'd really like you to let us know in the comment section below. Some people use, some people use gorilla or helicopter tape and it came out 100% zero that no one would know where these, no, that, that doesn't make any sense. So I can have a bicycle unfolded and in a stand. As we said before, there are three sheets of stickers and each sheet of the stickers is instructed on each of these three separate instructions. The right chain stay to seat stay brace In our world, this is the head tube. In our world, this is the head tube. This sticker is too big for the head tube. 
So, in the interest of Brompton protection, we might sacrifice one of our protection stickers to make sure that we get it in the right place. So let's give it a go. So it looks great from this side. And it looks truly shocking from this side. The top tube to seat tube brace right side. So, in the interest of safe Bromptoning, no. So, in the aims of safe